Hello everyone, it's Giga Beef here, and today we're going to have a bit more of a hands-on video today looking at the AKM, which is one of my favourite weapons in the game at the moment because BP rounds are extremely strong. Now the community has pretty much come to the consensus that BP for the AKM is one of the best rounds in the game, and there are many reasons as to why this is the case, but today we're going to look more specifically into the actual weapon itself to figure out some of the good builds for it at different levels that you can get access to. One of the absolute best things about the AKM is that you can get this barter from Prapple for three two shonkers. Lots of people do know about this, but given that now you can only buy them from him directly at 43,000, you can get this much cheaper on the barter by giving him three cans of two shonker. Now, as you can see here, people are putting up other ones that have not got max durability at prices between these two. And if we go and look for the two Shonka prices, these are almost always 10K or a little bit lower. So you can grab these while they're about 9,000 rubles each sometimes. It just depends really where it is on the market. So keep a lookout for these and see if you can get them below 10K. If you do, that means we'll be getting our AKM for something like 27,000 rubles, which is very efficient for what this platform actually allows you to do. So the first thing, if we jump into the preset system, we're going to look at the lowest recoil build as usual. Now this will look somewhat familiar because of the build we ran the other day with the night vision scope on it, which was a bit of a Mimi build for the AKMN. But for the AKM, we don't have that option because the dovetail mount isn't there, but that's not an issue. So we're gonna start off with the Troy, add the QARS rail, and then we're going to add the RK2. On the front, you now have the new 308 adapter, which we're going to use. We then have the Knight's Armament QDC suppressor compensator combo, which we're going to add on, which is this here. And the suppressor itself is going to be this one, the PRS QDC. That already takes us down to 61 vertical recoil without doing anything else, which is pretty insane. Let's get rid of the mag for now. In terms of the pistol grip, we'll put this guy on and then basically to get the minimum recoil, it's a bit silly because it isn't worth it to be honest with you. We use the ME4 buffer tube adapter and inside that we put in the Mesa Tactical Crosshair Hydraulic Buffer Tube and over the whole thing we put on the Magpul PRS Gen 3 stock. Remove the rear sight and put on the Bastion cover. Other than this, the last thing that doesn't affect recoil is the null charging handle. Now, I don't think this is worth it, as I said, but let's just do it for the time being. And that gets you to 28 ergonomics and 45 vertical recoil. The one that I'm going to focus on first off is the level three traders version, because not everyone has level four traders. BP ammo to get it, you do need to be level 30 to have the workbench three to do the barter, or you need to be Prapor three so that you can get it from him, but you also need to have completed Punisher five. So it is quite restricted, but by the time you get to it, you should have level three traders at least, I would hope. So we'll go with that for the time being. In terms of the muzzle combinations that you want to use for this, the RRD is Mechanic 4, so this doesn't work. However, there's a little neat tip that I have, which is the Tactic Tula muzzle adapter, which changes the thread to the AK-74 thread instead. And this then allows you to use the AK-74 RRD, which is, if we compare the stats between the two, it's only very slightly different. So it's the same ergonomics, but is two less recoil reduction. It takes us down to 91 from stock. So it's still very, very good and lets you access that much earlier in Mechanic 3 rather than Mechanic 4. Then we're going to talk about the gas blocks and the hand guards. As usual, I'm going to be referring to the Krebs. People, every time I talk about this, they complain and they say, don't spoil my fun, the Krebs is really good. But every time I talk about it, they go out of stock for a little bit and then they come back in again. So don't worry about it. Just keep it in the back of your head and remember that it's there. The Kibber Arms VDM CS gas tube, you have to get this from Mechanic 3 and this is the blocker for the Krebs. But the weird thing about the Krebs is it doesn't appear with any other gas tube. I've shown this before, as I said, but if you use the VDM CS tube, you can then go and add the Krebs, which is this one, the UFM, AK Krebs Custom UFM. And the beauty of this is that despite it being Peacekeeper 4, Pretty much always it's cheaper on the flea market because just not enough people know that this is a thing. So 13,000, this is very, very, very good. We can actually compare this if we look at the gas part itself. If we find the Kibber Arms CS tube and we go to a link search and we actually go and look through the various handguards for this particular weapon, you can see that the Strike Industries is one of the ones that you can attach here with minus 2%. The Krebs here is 13k, and then the next one is the Zenit V10M, and this is minus 2%. So with the Krebs is minus 3%, this is actually better. It gives you more ergonomics, and it also gives you more recoil reduction. And people sell it on the flea market for cheap because they don't know what to do with it, frankly. So with that efficient little piece, obviously if this is sold out, you can pick something else using that same method that's cheap. 
if we want to go and then add a vertical foregrip, we can use one of these ones, which is the AK standards, but none of them give that good vertical recoil reduction and ergonomics as a combination. So normally what I like to do is add one of the rails. I find that the Strike Industries rail from Mechanic is very slightly cheaper than the other one because it's priced in USD. And then we go through and I normally just go and add the RVG Black, which is a Peacekeeper 3 foregrip because this one's very efficient for the stats that it gives you. Moving on to magazines, the original one that this build comes with is the AK-55. Now you can see if you remove it, you get four ergonomics back. And there are some better versions of these mags. So the AK-30, the US Palm, which you can apply, and that is only minus one. And then also, so the 103 is actually not very good with minus three. But then you also have the Gen M3, the Magpul versions, which is minus two in terms of ergonomics. The aluminium ones are actually pretty decent. So if you can get your hands on those, there's a reason why these trade a little bit higher on the fleet. But anyway, for the time being, we're just going to leave that off. It doesn't really matter except for Ergo on exactly which you use. But I do think you can get away with the 30 rounders. I don't think you need that much more than that if you don't want to. Pistol grips. Again, normally I upgrade this to at least the saw grip, but for the moment, just to keep this as budget as possible, I'm going to leave it as is because the difference between the saw and the standard one is plus five. So is that enough to warrant going to the saw? Maybe, but I think for the moment we're just going to leave it to not spend that 5,000 rubles. Then onto the buttstock. The best thing about this is that you can use the AK GP accessory kit recoil pad, and this gives you some really decent stats. There are more options these days in terms of what you can add. So you have things like the Jukov, which as you can see is like plus 10 ergo and minus four recoil versus the standard. The UAS, which is a bit cheaper, which is plus 11, which is normally quite a decent shout. And then also this Op4, which is plus 12 and minus two. And this is actually an interesting one because it comes on mechanic three rather than level four traders. There's also some more combinations of things, but I just don't think are worth it. So you get the PT lock, which basically is no point using this thing with the PT one. It's just expensive for no reason. If you look at the stats here, it's 62 ergonomics and 74 vertical recoil. If we just change it over to any of the wooden AKM ones, we get to 58 ergonomics and 72 vertical recoil. So I just don't think, given that the recoil pad is 4,000 rubles, I don't think it's worth upgrading to this. Another one that's not really worthwhile, the ME4, which is the adapter, does get you some silly builds at times. But the problem with it is that the empty crosshair takes away a decent amount of ergonomics and the enhanced tubes for the usual platforms like the M4 is Mechanic 4. So you can use the HK enhanced tube and get something halfway in the middle and use the Magpul MOEs that we use on AR-15 type weapons. But again, you get to 62 and 72. This just goes to show how good value the butt pads are and the way that the base AKM stock actually functions in game. You get more recoil reduction from this because it's on the AKM and the way that it's balanced than you do from stocks that are traditionally applied to weapons like the M4, which is the reason why this combination actually punches above its weight for budget compared to other weapons, let's say. Charging handles, you can add them if you want. There's the RP1, which is at level one traders, which gives you one ergo. There's the three ergonomics CSS knurled, which comes at level two traders. You can add these if you want to. I'm not sure whether it's really worth it, but the CSA, let's see. So for plus three ergonomics, in this case, you get for 5,700 rubles. Mm. In the same vein as the saw grip, if we're not going to add the saw grip, then we wouldn't be adding this either. But it's definitely an option, especially if you're trying to go suppressed. I think for these builds, I'm looking at unsuppressed mostly. And if you're going suppressed, then sometimes that ergonomics is actually worth more. Because once we have 60 ergo, extra ergo is worth less than if we have, say, 20 ergo, where every single piece of ergonomics matters. So you just have to bear in mind that the value of ergonomics increases as the ergonomics of the weapon is lower. Right, next one, we're gonna change over the dust cover for the Bastion. This is basically required because the dovetail doesn't exist on the AKM, and this gives us the ability to mount all of our various optics and things. So this is important. It also gives us a little bit of ergonomics, which is five, and also gives us a little bit of recoil for another two. So it's a nice thing to have. This is normally why with the two Shonka trade existing that I don't often buy AKMNs because I don't really value the dovetail that much and given that we can apply basically any optic that we like using the Bastion, I don't really see the point in spending the extra money buying the AKMN when we want to use the Bastion anyway for its stats and its slight recoil reduction. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually swap this back to the original wooden stock because it affects the ergonomics very, very slightly. So having the plum one on is slightly unfair. And this gets us to 58 ergonomics and 70 vertical recoil, which is honestly completely usable. This gun is totally usable because of the fire rate of 600 RPM. It's actually fine. And in full auto, it's not the best ever, but it's actually a decent gun for, for tapping people. And in a pinch, you can use it there. So we go to look at find parts to see how much this weapon is going to cost us. We know that the actual AKM itself, we're not going to be spending 35k, we're going to be spending more like 25 to 30, really depends. We'll get the stock with it, so we don't need to buy this. And then everything else we are going to purchase. So that comes to about 47,000 rubles worth of mods. Now, this Krebs is cheap. Normally these are between 10 and 15. It just depends on the flea market at the time. So this really should be 49 to 54, something like that, plus 25 to 30-ish for the base AKM. So overall, this build is going to cost us 74 to 84,000 rubles, depending on the two Shonkers and the Krebs handguard, which I think is amazing value. We haven't added an optic or anything, but there's a huge wide variety that you can add and it's really up to you as to which one you want to use. One of the best parts about this too is that everything comes from level 3 traders except for this Krebs, which you need to rely on the flea for. But otherwise, everything's level 3, which is no mean feat. Right, so the next thing, we're going to pimp this out a little bit more. We're going to add the saw grip on and then we're going to add this op for, which is the one that I said comes from mechanic three. Now this gives us actually a really decent amount of ergonomics. So now we're at 75 ergo and 68 vertical recall. So if you wanted to, you could start looking and thinking about running some of the big drums if you really, really fancied, you know, because you're still at 57 ergo or whatever, right? This gives you a lot of flexibility about what you want to do. Also, if you did want to run it suppressed, this gives you a really good starting point to do so. So using the AK-308 adapter, uh, to be honest with you, I wouldn't really use any of the actual AK muzzles. So the best one is the PBS. So you can see that takes you to 52 and 81, which is actually pretty good for a suppressed build. But 81 vertical recoil, if you compare that to the AK-308 with the best in slot on it, which we looked at very slightly earlier, that's with the QDC and that takes you down to 55. So Yes, I agree that this is kind of expensive, but I don't think you actually really want to use many of the AKM specific suppressors. You want to be using these ones because you get more muzzle reduction on these than you do for the basic ones. The joy of the AKM is the fact that you can use either the TT and the RRD or the RRD straight if you have Mechanic 4, and that's where I think the real value is. So yeah, we have huge ergonomics using this particular build. This is still level three traders, which is pretty amazing. Again, except for the Krebs. I'm going to delete this and everything else we're going to need to buy. So this one's a little bit more expensive. The Krebs has gone up a little bit more. So this is going to be 72 to 77,000 ish. And then you're gonna have the same again for the AKM as the base with the Tushanka. So that's gonna be 97 to 107,000 rubles, something like that. Whether it's worth it for you to just get these two extra recoil points, but have a load more ergonomics is depending on what object you want to put on, how fast your ADS speed you actually want to have, things like that. Now, once you have level four traders, clearly you can switch this over to the RRD itself. And what I like using is the Zhukov here instead, which is from Peacekeeper 4. So it is an early level four trader because Peacekeeper does come slightly earlier than all the rest. But the Zhukov is pretty good in that it gives you an extra two recoil reduction here. So you get to 64. And then because our ergonomics is actually just so, so high, I actually don't think it's a problem to go over to the RK1. The RK1 is pretty decent here. You could use this. This is double the price for one extra ergo. So I don't think that's probably worth it. And again, the RK2 gives you even more, but you lose quite a lot of ergonomics then for that. The difference between the RK1 and the RK2 is nine, which is quite a lot. I'm not sure if I really want to do that. But the RK1, I think maybe strikes a good balance. So this actually gets us to 62 with 67 ergonomics, which is still completely fine. And you could slap on whatever optics you like up here. You could put on some of the rings, something like this, and then you could add on any of your favorite optics up there, little holographics or reflex sites, and like maybe attack 30 or a razor or something, which gets it much more expensive. But this really is up to you. I normally run it kind of like this with some sort of mount. I might use the delta point up here, or I might just use the one times. It depends on how I'm feeling and which map I'm going to. And then I may stick a laser underneath with any of the basic rails, just so I can more easily point fire people in CQB. But that, that stuff is really optional and isn't isn't required for the build. You can use it however you want, depending on the map you're going to and exactly your requirements, depending on what you want to use it for. So this build that we've come to here is, as I said, a bit more expensive. But so long as you can buy the things from the traders, it's not actually too, too bad. 
So again, we've got the Krebs here at 13K, which is sort of middle of the range. This is 87,000 rubles. So this is going to be about 85 to 90K roughly. And so it's not actually that much more because the Zhukov from Peacekeeper 4 is pretty good value. The little bit of increased price is the RK1, which is now 20K, which is, yeah, quite a lot. Guess we don't need this rail here technically either. But we're talking about something like plus 25 there, 110,000 to 120,000 rubles for the full build. Honestly, throwing out meta rounds with this gun, it's really, really quite decent. And I've had a great time running unsuppressed builds. But if you want to run suppressed, as I said, you could use the 308 adapter. I suppose you could use the QDC if you wanted to here. And you'd only end up with 44 Ergo, which is not too bad. And 51 Recall, which is actually very, very, very good. So yeah, I think this is probably my favorite build. I do like the unsuppressed one, but it's one of my favorite builds for this particular gun. And throwing out BP, it's performs really really well easily head taps people and in a pinch it's great as a thrower of bp downrange to your opponents and hopefully you'll slay them easily